that was really simple. We only wrote a couple lines of code and it really improves the quality of your downstream single cell analysis. So when you're doing single cell sequencing, you have a chance for doublets. So for example, in the 10X workflow, you're just squirting enzymes and beads and cells through a tube and hoping that they come out in these nice little single partitions. But in actuality, you get droplets like this that actually has two or more cells. So that really negatively affects the downstream data analysis because the 10x pipeline doesn't remove these by default. Today, I'm gonna to show how to do this using Solo, which is built into the SCVI package. We're gonna start by loading in SCVI, ScanP, and Pandas. And then we're just gonna load in our single cell data as a data. It doesn't matter the source. I'm just loading in a 10x H5 file. So I have 12,000 cells and 32,000 unfiltered features. We're just gonna do a really simple pre-processing. And then we're also gonna subset a data based on the highly variable genes. So if we look at our A data object, we have 12,000 cells and 3,000 highly variable genes. So we're gonna set up the SCVI model and train it just using default settings. So this is gonna take a few minutes, especially if you don't have a NVIDIA GPU, it could take even longer. Okay, so my SCVI model trained after a few minutes. So now we have to train the solo model that detects the doublets. So we'll just make a new object called solo, and then we'll call SCVI external solo, and then we're gonna do it from the SCVI model, which is the VAE, and then we're gonna train that solo.train. And this will take about as long as training the SCVI model, so another three minutes or so. So after that's done, we can call this solo object, so solo.predict, and it returns a data frame with the doublet and singlet prediction values. So these probabilities aren't on a scale of zero to one, but basically if the singlet prediction is higher than the doublet prediction, then it predicts that it's a singlet. If the doublet value is higher than the singlet value, then it's called a doublet. So if we actually pass soft equals false, oops, not solved. It returns the predicted value. So let's just make a little data frame with this. Okay, so now we have those two combined. And then I'm gonna do one little modification so we don't run into issues downstream. When we run SEVI, it adds this dash zero on the end of the cell barcode. So I'm just gonna remove that. All right, anyway, now that that's gone, let's see how many out of these 12,000 cells were actually called doublets. So it predicted almost 2,200 doublets out of the 12,000 cells. So there actually is a pretty high doublet rate. So I just want to visualize this on a UMAP real fast. You don't need to do this if you're just doing this as a pre-processing step, but I just wanted to show what the results look like. So I'm just going to add that prediction onto the adata.obs. So I just added that. I'm just gonna do typical scan peak clustering real fast. And then let's visualize this on a UMAP. So here in blue, we see the doublets. And you can see that some of these small clusters especially are almost predicted completely as doublets. And you see how cluster three is over here and then there's a small cluster three that isn't close. And we see that this is all doublets. So this is gonna clean up the data a lot. And again, you didn't need to do this step or this step or this step, but I just wanted to show that. And then let's just go back to DF. 
So what I want to do is now apply this to my fresh data. So I'm just going to load in the data again and then apply a filter to it. So I'm going to make a little dictionary of the cell barcodes and the prediction and then a little function to map it. So again, I just have a dictionary of the cell barcode and then if it's a doublet or a singlet, And then I made a little function because the original data hasn't been filtered. So you're going to get some errors if the barcode isn't in the dictionary. So let's just reload that A data from earlier. Just going to go ahead and copy and paste it from what we did above. So if we look at adata.obs, we have those 12,300 unfiltered cells. And then now let's map a new column as to whether this is a doublet or not. And I'm just passing I'm a function, which is what I named the function from earlier. So now if we look at a data obs, we have this doublet column and we can now filter the a data based on this column. And we only want to keep the singlets. And now we have our filtered a data object, which you can do whatever you want with now. So it's really only a handful of lines of code that you can just put in a little function when you load in an individual a data object. If you were going to continue with multiple samples, you would do this for each sample individually. And then now you do the typical pre-processing and integration. But that was really simple. It took a little bit of computational time, but we only wrote a couple lines of code and it really improves the quality of your downstream single cell analysis.